EPS and AVNRT EPS and AVNRT Typical catheters used in AVNRT study include High right atrial, HRA, catheter, quadripolar catheter, four electrodes, assembled in two pairs. Right ventricular apex, RVA, catheter, quadripolar catheter. His bundle, HB, catheter, quadripolar catheter. Coronary sinus, CS, catheter, decapolar catheter, 10 electrodes, assembled in five pairs. For EPS diagnosis of AVNRT the following are usually required. A. Demonstration of dual AV node physiology. B. Induction of the tachycardia. C. Response of the tachycardia to entrainment by ventricular pacing. Demonstration of dual AV node physiology. Dual AV node physiology can be diagnosed with any of the following four maneuvers. 1. AH jump. 2. AV node echo beats. 3. Two ventricular responses to a single atrial impulse. 4. Accidental recording of two different PR intervals in ECG, or two different AH intervals in EPS, either during sinus rhythm or during fixed rate atrial pacing. AH jump. Dual AV node physiology is defined as 50 millisecond or more jump in AH interval in response to 10 millisecond shortening of atrial extrastimulus coupling interval, or pacing cycle length, as discussed earlier. Conduction with a short PR or short AH interval reflects fast pathway conduction. Conduction with a long PR or long AH interval reflects slow pathway conduction. AH interval jump indicates block of anterograde conduction over the fast pathway, and its shift to the slow pathway. AV node echo beats. Dual AV node physiology is diagnosed when an atrial extrastimulus, AES, is conducted anterograde with a prolonged AH interval, confirming conduction via the slow pathway, followed by an AV node echo beat, seen as an A wave in high right atrial, HRA, channel, with a short VA interval, confirming retrograde conduction via the fast pathway. First two impulses, S1, in this schematic are the end of the pacing period. They are conducted normally, with the pacing spikes seen in HRA channel followed by A waves. The HIS bundle, HB, channel shows spikes, followed by AHV. The right ventricular apex, RVA, channel shows V waves. S2 is the atrial extrastimulus, AES, which is conducted with a prolonged AH, indicating slow AV node conduction. The V wave following the AES is conducted back to the atria echo beat, creating a wave in HRA channel, after the short VA interval that indicates fast conduction. The presence of slow and fast conduction is diagnostic of dual AV node physiology. Two ventricular responses to a single atrial impulse. Rapid atrial pacing or AES can result into two ventricular responses to a single paced atrial impulse, that is one to two response. The first ventricular response is caused by conduction over the fast pathway, while the second response is caused by conduction over the slow pathway. This 1 to 2 response requires unidirectional retrograde block in the slow pathway. 1 to 2 response The fast pathway wave front reaches the distal common pathway earlier and conducts anterograde to the ventricles. It cannot conduct retrograde in the slow pathway which has unidirectional retrograde block. The slow pathway wave front can now conduct also to the ventricles, creating another ventricular response to the same impulse. The last paced A wave seen in HRA channel conducted twice to the ventricles creating two V waves in RVA channel. This was followed by a sinus beat, creating one V wave. In presence of 1 to 2 response, the slow pathway has unidirectional retrograde block, as described, thus it can only support typical AVNRT which uses the slow pathway anterogradely, but cannot support atypical AVNRT, which requires retrograde conduction in the slow pathway. In patients with atypical AVNRT, the slow pathway usually conducts only retrograde, and has permanent anterograde block, thus, anterograde dual AV not physiology is usually not demonstrable. Different PR or AH during normal sinus rhythm or during fixed rate atrial pacing.
Different PR and AH intervals occur due to shift of conduction between the fast and the slow pathways. Conduction in the fast pathway results in shorter, while conduction in the slow pathway results in longer PR and AH intervals. This schematic shows two different AH intervals, recorded incidentally during sinus rhythm. The AH is shorter in the first portion of the tracing but longer in the last portion, representing shift of conduction between the fast, shorter AH, and the slow, longer AH, pathways of the AV node. Induction of AVNRT If the patient presents in sinus rhythm, both typical and atypical AVNRT may be induced by atrial extrastimuli, AES, atrial pacing, ventricular extrastimuli, VES, or ventricular pacing. Atrial pacing, to stabilize the cycle length, is shown in this schematic, followed by ease, which induced a short VA tachycardia, that is VA interval is shorter than AV interval. Atrial pacing, to stabilize the cycle length, is shown in this schematic, followed by ease, which induced a long VA tachycardia, that is VA interval is longer than AV interval. Differentiation Demonstration of dual AVN physiology is in favor, but not diagnostic, of AVNRT, because these patients can also develop other types of paroxysmal SVT. Induction of tachycardia is in favor of, but not specific for reentry, since delayed after depolarization, DAD, arrhythmia is also inducible. Failure to induce or terminate an arrhythmia does not, per SE, eliminate reentry as a mechanism for the arrhythmia. Conclusion, other differentiating tests are required. Differentiate reentry from DAD. To indicate reentry, there must be other characteristics, namely, Induction of arrhythmia is dependent on the presence of slow conduction, favoring reentry. Inverse relationship between the coupling interval and the return interval, specific for reentry. And entrainment, specific for reentry. These criteria were discussed earlier in details. Response to entrainment by ventricular pacing. If the patient presence during tachycardia, or tachycardia is induced during EPS, tachycardia entrainment by ventricular pacing should be tried. In AVNRT and orthodromic AVRT, ventricular pacing at a cycle length, CL, shorter than the tachycardia CL, without terminating the tachycardia, usually results in 1 colon 1 retrograde VA conduction, through the retrograde limb of the reentry circuit, which is the fast pathway in typical, slow fast, AVNRT. The slow pathway in atypical, fast slow, AVNRT. The bypass tract in orthodromic AVRT. After termination of pacing, two responses are recognized, AV and AAV responses. AV response after pacing termination. In AVNRT and orthodromic AVRT, the last paced V-wave conducts to the atria in the retrograde limb of the tachycardia circuit, resulting in the last retrograde A wave, which then conducts to the ventricles in the anterograde limb, that is not refractory, resulting in anterograde V wave. The result is an AV pattern. In atrial tachycardia, the last retrograde A wave cannot conduct back to the ventricles, because the AV node is still refractory following the previous retrograde conduction of the ventricular paste impulse. Thus, the last retrograde A-wave in such cases cannot be followed by V-wave. Conclusion, AV response practically excludes atrial tachycardia, and the diagnosis is either AVNRT or orthodromic AVRT. AV response The last paced V-wave conducts to the atria in the retrograde limb of the tachycardia circuit, resulting in the last retrograde A-wave, which then conducts to the ventricles in the anterograde limb, that is not refractory, resulting in anterograde V-wave. The result is an AV pattern. For correct interpretation of the response, two rules are required. 1. Presence of VA association during pacing with 1 to 1 VA conduction, that is each V is followed by A, and the ventricular cycle length, CL, or VV cycle, and the atrial CL, or AA cycle, are equal. This is to ensure that the tachycardia is really entrained by ventricular pacing. If VA dissociation is noticed, 
this means that ventricular pacing is not affecting the tachycardia, in which case the response cannot be interpreted. 2. Last retrograde A is followed by an AA interval equal to the tachycardia cycle length, which means that this interval belongs to the recurring tachycardia, not to the pacing period. Entrainment of the tachycardia by ventricular pacing is ensured by the presence of VA association, that is each paced V wave is followed by an A wave. After termination of pacing, tachycardia recurs with its own CL, the CL following the last retrograde A should be equal to the recurring tachycardia CL, not to the pacing CL. AAV response after pacing termination. During atrial tachycardia, at Ventricular pacing results in retrograde 1 to 1 VA conduction through the AV node. The last retrograde A wave will not conduct back to the ventricles as outlined before. This is followed by A and V waves of the resumed atrial tachycardia, and the result is an AAV pattern. AAV response is diagnostic of atrial tachycardia, and practically excludes both AVNRT and AVRT. The last retrograde A wave will not conduct back to the ventricles as outlined before. This is followed by A and V waves of the resumed atrial tachycardia, and the result is an AAV pattern, which is diagnostic of atrial tachycardia. Last paced V wave is followed by last retrograde A wave, then the first A wave of the resumed tachycardia, that conducts to the ventricles creating V wave, that is AAV pattern. Pseudo responses. Pseudo responses can occur in two conditions. 1. Presence of VA dissociation, due to absent VA conduction, meaning that there is no entrainment of tachycardia during ventricular pacing. This can produce pseudo AV or pseudo AAV responses. 2. Very slow VA conduction during ventricular pacing. This can only produce pseudo AAV response. In this condition, if the VA interval is longer than the pacing CL, each A wave will not belong to the preceding V wave but to the one before the preceding V wave, so that the CL after what seems to be the last retrograde A equals the pacing cycle length, not the tachycardia cycle length. Pseudo AV response due to VA dissociation during ventricular pacing. Note that the tachycardia cycle length, TCL, is maintained during pacing, which is longer than the pacing cycle length, PCL. Response cannot be interpreted in such cases. Pseudo AAV response due to VA dissociation during ventricular pacing. Note that the tachycardia cycle length, TCL, is maintained during pacing, which is longer than the pacing cycle length, PCL. Response cannot be interpreted in such cases. Pseudo AAV response due to marked prolongation of VA conduction time, which is longer than the pacing CL. Each A wave does not belong to the preceding V wave but to the one before the preceding V wave, so that the CL after what seems to be the last retrograde A equals the pacing cycle length, not the tachycardia cycle length. Thank you.